Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, especially to our TRC124 instructor, Mr. Rolando Laurenti Jr. I am Shilame P. Bernal, and we are Group 3. We are here at your screen to discuss our topic entitled Leisure, Recreation, and Lifestyle Management. And I am assigned to discuss to you the lesson topic number one, which is the recreation and leisure. First, how do we define leisure? Leisure is a time during which somebody has no obligation or work responsibilities and therefore is free to engage in enjoyable activities. Leisure is a time spent away from businesses, work, and domestic chores. It also excludes time spent on necessary activities such as eating, sleeping, and where it is compulsory, education. Whereas, Recreation refers to the time spent in an activity one loves to engage in, with the intent to feel refreshed. Recreation also refers to the break or monetary and a diversion from a daily routine. It is also a positive change from the stereotypical lifestyle and involves an active participation in entertaining activities that one is interested in. Recreational activities give enjoyment because while recreating, one engages in something he likes. And lastly, recreation, they are a source of joy and they provide relaxation to one's mind and body. These are the common areas of recreation and leisure. This includes sports, sim sports and individual sports, camping and ecologic pursuits, exercise, food and dining, festivals and fairs, art crafts and sewing, social clubs, shopping, media entertainment such books, magazines, movies, televisions, music, and theater and drama, followed by collecting antiques, hobbies, gaming such as casinos, computer interactive or gaming systems, literature, family activities, vacations, and lastly volunteering. By the way, what are recreational facilities? A recreational facility is a public facility for recreation. It is a building or place that provides a particular service or is used in particular industry. Active recreation. What is active recreation? Active recreation is about engaging in adventure sports or outdoor games. While passive recreation involves activities like scrolling on the beach or taking a walk on the riverside. everyone, especially to our instructor in THC124, Mr. Lauren Lee. So I'm Mary Abby Averly and I'm going to record lesson topic 2, Key Components of the Leisure and Recreations Industry. There are 7 key components of the leisure industry. There are home-based leisure, visitor attractions, children's play activities, catering, countryside recreation, arts and entertainment, and lastly, sports and physical recreation. Leisure and recreation industry is composed of two important components. First, leisure recreation facilities. Second, leisure and recreation activities. So, leisure and recreation facilities means a public building and grounds for community entertainment, relaxation, and social activity and other leisure needs. While recreational activities are often done or enjoyment, amusement, or pleasure, and are considered to be fun. Next, factors promoting the growth of recreation. First, increase in discretionary time. Second, influence of technology. Third, public interest in health and fitness. Fourth, commodification of leisure. Fifth, therapeutic recreation service. And lastly, new leisure rules for women. Recreational activities can be classified as indoor and outdoor recreation, and recreation can be done in two ways, alone and group. The indoor recreation activities are the things that you do for fun and enjoyment in the comfort of your home or any covered area, while outdoor recreation or outdoor activity refers to the recreation engaged in out for indoors most commonly in natural setting. So the alone style is you spend recreation activities by yourself while group recreation style is you spent recreation facilities can be classified as commercial recreation 
the provision of recreation-related products or services by private enterprise for a fee with a long-term intent of being profitable. Second, non-commercial recreation refers to an activity or entity that does not in some sense involve commerce, at least relative to similar activities that do not have a commercial objective or emphasis. It includes voluntary organization, campus, armed forces, and employee recreation as well as recreation for special populations. So next, we have economic, social, and environmental impacts and leisure and creation, recreation. First, we have the outside capital is attracted. Second, local economy is stimulated. Third, employment opportunities. Fourth, recreation opportunities increase. Fifth, task tax revenues increase. Sixth, property values increase. And lastly, economic multiplier improves. So, the negative impacts of leisure and recreation are high failure rates result in employment or low economy. Local roads, utilities, etc. can become unburdened. Crime can increase, natural resources can be overused, and lastly, undesirable types of commercial recreation may appear. Good day everyone, my name is Mary Choice Faithalan and my topic is overview on the different leisure and recreation facilities. So first, what is leisure facilities? Leisure facilities can also be important nationally and address the needs of the people of and sometimes beyond. Also, Leisure facilities is a public building containing different facilities of leisure activities such as sports hall, swimming pool, aerobics, studio, and etc. So there are six different categories of national leisure facilities. So first is the Recreation Center for Excellence. Recreation Center for Excellence, each center provides elite athletes with a range of specialist facilities equipment, expertise, and residential accommodation suitable for training and competition. So, Research Recreation Center is a place for recreational activities usually administered by a municipal government agency. So, these are the examples of Recreation Center for Islands. So, next is sports venues. Our competitors, such as races, takes place. It is a building structure or place in which a sporting competition is held. For example is arena, baseball park, bowling gym, ice hockey arena, motor sports venues or autodrome, horse race, horse racing hypodrome, shooting range, speed skating rink, and lastly is stadium swimming pools. So these are the examples of sports venues. These are the speed skating rink and the arena. So next is museums and galleries. A museum is an institution that cares for and conserves a collection of artifacts and other so objects of scientific, artistic, cultural, or historical importance and makes them available for public viewing through exhibits that may be permanent or temporary. So, this is the examples of museums and galleries. So next is tourist attraction. is a place of interest where tourists visit, typically for its inherent <coughs> or exhibited cultural value, historical significance, natural or built beauty or amusement opportunities. Also, tourist attraction, they tend to attract tourists. In travel and tourism industry, attractions therefore play a particular important role as this attracts tourists all over the world. So, this is the examples of tourist attraction, one of the most famous tourist attraction here in the Philippines. So, this is Palawan and Boracay. So, next is theme parks. An amusement park is more elaborate than a simple city or park or playground. Usually attractions meant to cater specifically to certain in age groups, as well as is some that are aimed towards all ages. While theme park is a specific type of amusement park that are usually much more integrately themed to a certain subject or group of subjects 
the normal amusement park. So this is the example of theme parks, the Enchanted Kingdom. So next is historical sites. A historic site is any building, landscape site, or structure that is of local, regional, or national significance. A historic site is an official location where pieces of political, military, or social history have been preserved. Historic sites are also usually protected by law and many have recognized with the official national site status. So, so one of the example of historic site is Fort Santiago. Fort Santiago is one of the most important historical sites here in Manila. So, it is a fortress built in the late of 1500s by the Spanish government during the colonization of Manila as part of its intramuros. So it is a famous historical site wherein this is the place where Jose Rizal imprisoned during that time. Good day everyone, I am Richard Kate Antolio from Group 3. I assigned a report about the understanding licensures and recreations clientele. Effective customer service, all licensures and recreations need to make sure that their customers are happy with the service they receive. In order to do this, they, have, they must have effective customer service. So this includes the meeting customers' need, ensuring health and safety of customers, self, colleges, and facility, ensuring security of customers, self, colleges, facilities, and information. So meeting customers' needs. When using a leisure and recreation facility, Customers will expect effective service and will have a variety of needs. So, for example, they need to feel welcome. It is important that all the staff are friendly and helpful. They need to pay a fair price. It is essential that the customer do not feel that they have been charged too much and that the price is similar to the so that of other leisure and reactions facilities of the same kind. Customers who think that they have been overcharged will probably never come back. They need to receive a good quality service. So it is important that customers leave the facility feeling satisfied and that they have received the service they expected. So. They need to get reliable and honest information. Never lie to customers about the service or give a false impression. So, for example, a hotel that describes its location as being near a sea, when it the fact, it is at least a walk, 20 minutes walk away. Hello everyone, I am Ami Van Hel from BSHM1C and my report is about during health and safety. Health and safety is one of the most important things that leisure and recreation facilities must consider. It includes the health and safety of customer, self, colleagues, facilities. Taking part of recreational activities, especially outdoor, can greatly improve physical health. Participation in leisure and recreational activities should be an enjoyable experience. If there is a genuine risk, see what you can do to minimize that risk and still go ahead, it can often be done. Leisure and recreation customers often take part in activities which could involve some risks. For example, swimming, horse riding, rock climbing, and gym workout. There are also other things that may be a risk that are not so obvious. For example, staying in a hotel. If there is a fire, it is important that the guests know where the fire exits are. Eating food. It needs to be cooked properly in a clean environment and also the utensils and equipment to be used are clean. Next, visiting historic sites. There may be dangers from crumbling walls or poor paving which must have warning signs for customers. Going on rides at a theme park. If the equipment is not checked regularly, 
it could be extremely dangerous. When people visit a leisure and recreation facility, they often have to leave their position somewhere safe. It is important that they can trust the staff to look after their belongings and not to worry that they may get stolen or lost. Some examples of customer security include At a bowling alley, people leave their shoes at the reception. In the hotel, people leave their clothes in their rooms and sometimes put things of value in the hotel safe. When visiting a museum, customers sometimes have to leave all their bags at the reception. A lot of customers have to leave their cars in a car park when visiting a facility. At a gym, swimming pool, or sports center, customers usually place their belongings in a locker. When flying somewhere, all hand luggage is put through a special x-ray machine to check the contents. Most nightclubs employ doormen to stop unwanted visitors. Information leaflets about the potential dangers when visiting a foreign country are often given to tourists. Self and colleagues. It is just as important to look after yourself and the people you work with as it is to look after customers. You can do this by making sure you are properly trained to do the different types of tasks putting equipment away carefully in a correct place, making sure that you know about the different health and safety rules and emergency procedures at your workplace, always wearing and using the correct equipment, reporting anything to your supervisor that you think may be dangerous to others, benefits of providing excellent customer service. Providing effective customer service can cost a lot of money but can also bring many benefits to the facility. Its staff and customers including increased sales, enhanced reputation, increased job satisfaction, increased customer satisfaction, last, safe and secure environment. It often increases a business cost. This additional cost could include higher staff wages from hiring employees who are experts in customer service, paying for staff training, the extra services offered such as refreshments and higher wage costs from the extra time staff take to provide post-sales service. Benefits of providing organization Any facility that is spending money in order to provide effective customer service will help to increase the number of sales, improve the reputation, and gain repeat business. That's all, thank you. History of Gaming Industry the gaming industry has undergone a substantial evolution since the 1970s and has moved from a French activity into the mainstream. In 1971, the arcade game Computer Space was released and was followed up by Atari INC's first commercially successful video game, Pong. Games entered the home formally with the release of an early gaming console called the Magnavox Odyssey. The market lost momentum in 1977 and was rejuvenated in 1978 by another successful game called Space Invaders. With this, arcade machines began to appear in mainstream public spaces such as malls, stores, and restaurants. The industry saw another crash in 1983, down from a successful period in the early 1980s. 1982 saw the peak of the industry with a revenue of $8 billion, which over, overtook annual revenues or pop music and Hollywood films combined. The crash was brought about in North America because of too many substandards games. The Nintendo Entertainment System revived the industry once again. By the late 1980s, handheld systems such as Game Boy were also entering the market. During the 1990s, some important advancements were made in the industry including the use of CDs to store and distribute software as well as the large scale implementation of GUI based operation systems. Along with this, there were advancements in 3D graphics and this became the standard for video game visuals. The processing speeds and sophistication for computers also continued to develop and the size of hardware reduced significantly to herald the advancement of mobile gaming. 
The popularity of the internet allowed multiplayer games and competitive gaming. The industry remained unpredictable in the 2000s as third-party game develops game and went quickly. Some managed to stay on such as casual and indie games. Braid and Nimbo mobile phone games began to be developed for iOS and Android devices and a new gaming platform emerged in the form of social media sites. Following 2010, the industry continues to develop and profit drives technological advancement which then benefits other sectors of the industry. Casual and indie games continue to develop in PC, console, and mobile gaming. Types of gaming. Over the years, video gaming has evolved to include to a number of different mediums. Evolution has led from consoles becoming more sophisticated over the decades. PC games become multiplayer and more complex and an intact ecosystem of mobile games. Let's look at what this all means. PC gaming. PC games or personal computer games are played on a computer through keyboards, mouse, a joystick, or a gamepad. These games are characterized by a lack of a central controlling authority and a greater capacity for input, processing, and output. PC games lost the market to consoles briefly mid-90s, but resurfaced in the mid 2000s. Thanks to digital distribution, games can be played locally or online. The history of gaming dates to the ancient human past. Gaming are an integral part of all cultures and are one of the oldest forms of human social interaction. Gaming are formalized expressions of play which allow people to go beyond immediate imagination and direct physical activity. As long as you've got and understanding the evolution of gaming, you can begin to make intelligent choices about what elements of gaming you might want to include in your gaming design. Good day sir, by the way, I am Jayka Diyot from BSHMNC. And in this video, I am going to report about the continuation of the gaming entertainment industry. First is console gaming. A device that is used to play games is called a video game, a video game console. The console outputs a video image that displays the game. Consoles include those who use to play games at home, handheld consoles, micro consoles, and dedicate, dedicated consoles. The console has evolved to now be one device that can be used as a set-top box, a web browser, and a CD and DVD player. So, a video game console is an electronic or computer device that outputs a video signal or visual image to display a video game that one or more people can play through some type of game controller. So, next is mobile gaming. A video that is played using a mobile device such as a smartphone, a tablet, or even a calculator, or a smartwatch is known as a mobile game. The very first mobile game was Ter Tetris on the Hinoch MT-2000 device in 1994 and was followed by Nokia Snake in 1987. At present, mobile games are downloaded onto a smartphone or tablets using an app store or are embedded in the device when purchased. Games can be, de can be played in the device or over the cloud. So a mobile game is a video game that is typically played in a mobile mobile phone. Historically, the term refers to all games that are played on any portable device, including for mobile phone, tablet, PDE to handle, handle handheld game console, portable media, or graphing calculator with and without network ability. And the next one is the value chain. Video game development has its own value chain. This chain determines the final price of the game as it reaches the consumer. The chain consists of the following vital parts. So the first is investment. Investments in this industry are growing as the industry itself is a popular one. Investment may come from the platform which will feature the game or a large publishing organization. Independent developers may also choose to fund their own games. The major challenges at this stage is to prevent copyright infringement and, pri and piracy. 
Second is the design and creative. This is where the game is developed creatively by artists, designers, and developers. The game is taken from a basic concept to a project plan. Documents and guidelines are created at this point to support game development. These include treatment documents to clarify the purpose of the game, gameplay, story, character, descriptions, and concept art. This is then translated into more detail in the design document. An art style guide is also created to establish uh, uniformity across the game of, for the same look and feel. Final, a project plan will be created to keep everyone on track and establish timelines. Production and post. This is the hardware and software to be used during the actual production of the game. Production tools may include those for modeling and graphic manipulation. Bigger setups may own their own gaming engine, while smaller ones may use middleware which is licensed. Publisher or distribution. Here, are the game publisher will work on marketing tool and catalogs to get the game into the market and ensure a return on investment. Hardware. This part of the value chain involves the game hardware providers. These companies may be across various platforms since most games developed these days are able to exist similarly. Some of these companies maybe pay extra or make special deals to launch a game across their platform initially and exclusively for a limited period of time. The largest of these companies are Microsoft, Apple, Sony, and Nintendo. The last is end user. A key part of the value chain is the end used or the gamer. Most of these are men of all ages, but women also make up a significant part of the market, especially with the advent of mobile and online gaming. The next is the economics of the gaming industry. To understand competition in the industry, it is important to understand the economics of it. The more profitable the industry is, the more the need to gain a chunk of the pie. This need leads to more innovation, investment, and cutthroat rivalry to the lead of the pack. Before technology developed to what it is now, Developing video games cost relatively less and therefore, there was a great margin for profit. Often the games were developed by a single programmer or a small team and took a few months to prepare. This led to several releases every year. With improvements in gaming technology, there became a need for larger development teams to deal with increased complexities in design that came with technological advancement. These teams now included programmers, artists, game designers, and producers, and mainly began to draw higher salaries, thereby increasing the cost of labor. The time frame for the development also increased to anywhere between one and three years. Three years. This led to budgets of millions as marketing costs also skyrocketed. The industry continues to bring in revenues and impact the economy with games such as Call of Duty, Black Ops bringing in $650 million dollars, in sales within the first few days of launch, and the global video game market is worth $93 billion. Good day, sir. I am Rachel Balaod Horomo, and this is my report. Competitive rivalry in the gaming industry. Given the immense revenue potential, it is no wonder that the gaming industry remains extremely competitive. The industry grow is growing and potential for success remains immense. Yet, Com companies within the industry are under a constant state of stress. The quickly developing technology together with intense competition, volatile consumer habits, and lack of regulation means an unstructured industry where no competitive edge is sustainable and the top position is always being fought over. This is why there is a strong focus on a creative culture with within the company while, wars while war strategies are required at the senior level of to identify and remove competition. The market remains unstable, where success is enjoyed in cycles by, by any one gaming platform where a downturn is only temporary. As technology advances in one area, it may enjoy a comeback stronger than ever. For example, online PC games had surpassed consoles in popularity in 2012 with consoles having little impact now on the sector. Experts see this downturn as the end of a cycle and predict a rebound for the medium. Difficulty in predicting features. Over time, it has been observed that expert predict predictions often turn out completely wrong in the industry. As an example, in 2006, Michael Patcher of Witt Bosch Morgan Securities, an expertise firm, said, I think the PC gaming market 
will cease to grow, while sales of console games will increase by 50%. PC gaming will become a Nike, albeit of comfortable size, but still a Nike. He had support in this opinion from the like of Bill Gates and the fact that the time which included the fluttering or faltering popularity of MMOs or massive league multiplayer online games. This had been dominating the landscape since 1995. But following this statement, there was the release of the iPhone, the launch and rising popularity of Facebook and Facebook game developer, Zynga. Within six years, the gaming landscape had changed entirely from what had been predicted. A difficulty in predicting the future means all strategies end up being reactionary and no concrete plans can be made longer than two to three years. Operating the uncertainty. Publishers and developers in that industry have learned to operate with the uncertainty. Given consumer expectations, development costs cannot be reduced drastically and the need of invest in new technology takes away from any productivity gained from old technologies. But with all these difficulties, there have been also some avenues that have allowed new business models to emerge. These include online games, social networks, smartphones, and tablets. Games can be offered free for a basic level with in-game purchases or advanced paid options. This allows risk to be minimized a profit-making channel built into games that have a better chance of gaining popularity. Console manufacturers also need to be wary since new games are being developed that can be played across consoles, thereby reducing their power over publishers. Good day everyone, my name is Gian Maticalvo. So I'm going to report about job prospects in the gaming industry. So there are some possible avenues that I'm going to discuss. Composer. As games become more complex and detailed, music composer can play a great role in bringing the game to life much life films or television shows. A good way to get started in the field is to work for a small producer or an indie game developer. Developer. This is the most abused and key role in the industry. Though it helps if you have had the right training in school for this role. People are increasingly able to use their skills to become independent developers. An Android-based console, Oya is a great tool for creating games and is free to use. Marketing As an immense number of games flood on gaming arena every year, marketing these games becomes a key role for the industry. It is vital to set the game apart from others and promote it effectively. Otherwise, it will be overshadowed by others. Journalist. There are games journalists who may run blogs or write for different publications and online communities. Voice actor. Another job that usually comes to mind only for film and television is voice acting. There is great opportunity for this type of work in the gaming industry. Game taster. A video game taster needs to be able to play all kinds of games in various genres while paying attention to details and remaining patient. Flows need to be identified in both good games and really bad ones so this is not an easy job. Outlook in 2015. There are some interesting trends being predicted for the industry in the coming year. Superdata is a research firm that ranks and analyzes digital sales of video games. CEO Juice Vance drew Nance's top trends for the industry for 2015 include virtual reality. Facebook acquired the company which created a virtual reality device for $2 billion with the hope of turning this device into a mainstream product. Sony is also working a VR device of its own using the code name Project Morpheus using its considerable experience and funds. Twitch. 
Amazon is also getting deeper into the industry by acquiring Twitch for 970 million. Twitch is a video platform that is dedicated to live streaming gameplay and comp competitions. As the largest retailer of, ga of video games, Amazon will be able to use this platform to connect consumers with relevant content and products and will have access to the perfect audience for advertising and pushing sales. Esports. The popularity of platforms such as Twitch is largely because of the increase in popularity if competitive video gaming and tournaments. The extremely popular game League of Legends with 80 million players per month had a recent world champions in South Korea with 40,000 attendees and 32 million online views. This could be a potential platform for advertisers and a possible dedicated cable channel. Mobile gaming. It is estimated mobile games will bring in more revenue this year than console games will. Big publishers will continue to try to cap capitalize on this by buying talent and intellectual property rights from smaller studios and developers. There is also the danger for saturation in this area, however. More women in the industry. There is finally an expectation that the industry will begin to take female gamers seriously as an audience. The Entertainment Software Association undertook a study that report an estimated 48% of all U.S. gamers to be women. Outnumbering teenage boys, women and executive rules and video game companies are becoming more prominent and stronger for more diverse characters and story lines. That would be all. Thank you so much for watching and listening and have a nice day.